Okay, good evening. I got a new mic uh, we bought and uh, testing one, two, three, four, five. How's, how's that sound over here? Problems? Problems that? All right, it's going to work. Incredible. All right, well, thank you. <clears throat> YouTubers, love you. Thank you for showing up. And uh, our next seminar is the end of the, this month. It's on divine healing. And I'm on the radio every morning and afternoon here locally on these two stations. And I'm also on the West Valley on this FM station in the morning and in the middle of the night. I'm always on the radio on the internet on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. And uh, if you want to switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our ministry name, Hardcore Christianity, they'll donate to us whenever you surf the web. Uh, all my teachings on Friday night are on our second YouTube channel, House of Healing Izzy. Thursday nights, which was last night, that's broadcast on our live stream station. And of course, Friday nights on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you know somebody that needs to be delivered, I have these two lists I've prepared and uh, they work if the person uses them. They don't work if they don't. If they have a mentally ill Christian or a troubled Christian, you can send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com and I'll send those to you. It's a step-by-step -step process to go through deliverance and healing. And if you want to know if they work, go to the website there and hit the testimonial page. There's a bunch of people who have given testimonies about going through the list, and they got healed. So that will, that will encourage the person to go ahead and do it. YouTubers, please remember you are to open up a terror cell in your church and uh, start picking, up, picking off the sick people one at a time. You isolate them. Get them alone. Sometimes you got to sneak up on them. And you peel them apart from the group and you get them healed. You only need two or three people to run a terror cell in a church. It works great. I used to have a terror cell when I was in church years ago. I had my own terror cell and it worked great. I was picking people off, and pretty soon word of mouth starts spreading, and I had more people than I could, could handle. Then I got in trouble. <laughs> and that's how the system works, and so that's the nature of the beast. Then you move on. I moved on. You'll move on to something better. Bless you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the healing house. We've had our Two crews come through there, and they're getting blasted every time they come in. It's been wonderful. Thanks to you. You can donate to the ministry on the website. Just hit the PayPal button. And I will see you in Oceanside later this month on the 18th for two services at the Marriott. All right, let's get started. Uh, tonight's Bible study is on the Queen of Rejection. John chapter 4, what a wonderful journey this is. The Holy Ghost wrote the Bible, and uh, he rubbed it in the devil's face when he wrote it because he used uh, flawed humans to, as his instruments. The Holy Spirit likes flawed humans. I've had uh, wonderful fortune with him. I have a laundry list of flaws. And we get along fine. The disciples were kooks and nuts, crackpots and goofs. They were perfect for him. He likes flawed people. He fixes them. He renovates them. He motivates them. He anoints them. And he cranks them up. That's what he did in the Bible. And if you notice through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in almost every instance of ministry, he always chose the worst case scenario, the rottenness situation. The maniac of Gadara was mentally ill, off the hook. 
the woman with the issue of blood dying hopeless penniless at, at the end of a rope everybody that got healed almost was a desperate case worst case scenario a lousy case a hopeless case in John chapter 4 it happened again these stories are fantastic because they're they're all hopeless they're the worst cases you know why he did it yeah it's obvious hey if this case can be healed you're in if the worst case possible can be healed there's hope for you that was that's the point of it so Jesus got all the rotten cases the worst cases why to help us saving us it's great here is the worst case of childhood rejection in the Bible I've been counseling for years now and almost there isn't a week gone by and I don't have to face this demon somebody has this horrible spirit and in John chapter 4 this woman had it worse than anybody you remember her Jesus left Judea and departed again into Galilee where was that well Galilee was up here and that was his home area right then Samaria was underneath that and then you had Galilee down here right so he comes from uh, Judea down here he's going back to Galilee up there and he's going through Samaria Samarians were people that Jews couldn't stand here they are Galilee Samaria Judea and Jesus had to pass through Samaria right here to get to Galilee here's the map and he comes to Samaria to a city called Sukkar which means drunken liars <clears throat> near the parcel of ground Jacob gave to Joseph and Jacob's well was there Jesus being wearied from his journey sat on the well it was about the sixth hour which would be noon right so the zero hour would be 6 a.m. right then the sixth hour would be noon and then the twelfth hour would be 6 p.m. sunset right and the city used to be called Shechem and that name uh, meant someone with a strong shoulder but the Samaritans moved in the Jews hated the Samaritans and they changed the name to Sukkar which went from strong shoulder to drunken liars yeah and then Shechem is where the great prophet Joshua was buried that's in chapter 24 and Jacob's well was uh, mentioned in Genesis 33. That was his well, and he gave it to Joseph. So this was a famous area, but it was now in a bad neighborhood. Did anybody grow up in a rotten neighborhood? The Samaritans were a rotten neighborhood. Jews, they were kind of racist. We don't have any racism in our society. But back then, racism was big. You didn't have anything to do with those people. Samaritans were Jews, but they had let the Gentiles in. And when the Gentiles came in, they brought in their religions. And Samaritans were Jews, but they were also idolaters. The Jews hated the Samaritans and didn't want to have anything to do with them. They were on the south side of the tracks. And... Jesus, here's Jacob's well. I thought I'd throw that in for my own interest. Here's a really old picture of it in the 1800s, and that's what it looked like in the 1900s. It's a tourist attraction now. Here's what it looks like now. They built it up. It's about 105 feet deep, and it's about nine feet across. You know, from here to there would be about nine feet. And during the winter months, it's got about 15 foot of water in it. So 
Back in the day, wells were like happy hour. What's a happy hour? Well, you don't know because you're all born again Christians, but when I was living in sin, I went to happy hour every week. I loved happy hour. Loved to look at the chicks. Uh huh. I had a lot of scanner in my eyes. I could spot them. Hot babe from here, way down there. I meet my friends there. We'd have a few beers. Well, they did the same thing at these wells. They were community gatherings, and single people went there, like happy hour, to find a mate. In addition, the wells also had hookers there. It's business. So a wells were popular areas. People hung out at wells. Yeah. When I was living in sin, I'd go to Enchiladas every Friday. They would go to Jacob's Well. <laughs> That's how it worked. Okay, so this is in Samaria now. And no self-respecting Jew would go to this well and hang out there with a bunch of Samaritans coming to happy hour, so to speak, at the well, plus, plus hookers, plus all kinds of people. People wanting to get married, people socializing, you know, for obvious reasons. I'm drinking beer at enchiladas, they're drinking water and wine there. Okay. <clears throat> and there came a woman from Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me something to drink. His, di his disciples weren't there. They went into the city to buy meat. The Greek word for meat there is brahmo. It means food. And the woman said to Jesus, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink? Now, this spirit of rejection that I have to face every week usually gets into the person when they're a child. They usually get in during periods of abuse, and he hides in the person's brain, in the frontal lobe part of the brain, right here. And over the years, he develops a negative thought disorder in the person. The person starts to develop a chronic, obsessive, negative thought disorder, and he created it because he constantly puts negative thoughts in the child's mind. The child grows up with low self-esteem and a low self-concept, and they see the world through a negative prism. They're very negative people, and they don't know it. They're negative naturally. This poor woman, my guess is, was abused as a child, picked up this spirit of rejection, and we'll find out in a minute exactly what he did to her. I see it almost every week in my counseling practice. First thing she does is say something negative to him. Hey, you're a Jew. You don't like us. Can you see her thought process? Can you see the negativity in her thought process right at this moment? He says, give me to drink, which was a non-negative statement. He was just thirsty. And she then, by nature, went negative. What are you doing asking me for a drink? You're Jewish. Negative. Negative two. What? Jews don't have any sukraomai means to have personal interactions. So if I sat down with you and said, how's your day going? What happened to the kids? How was work? What's, you need, you're going to Walmart. You need something. Want me to pick something? That's interpersonal communication. They would not do that with Samaritans. They would do Circle K. I go into Circle K all the time. I prefer QT, but now that I'm down here, there's only Circle K. 
You go in there, you buy this thing, fill that thing up, buy that, thank you, see you tomorrow, I leave. That's not... Jews had that. They had business dealings. Hey, you want to buy this? You want to sell that? They interacted with the Samaritans, but they had no social, personal intercourse with them because they saw them as scum. Jews are here. Samaritans are here. The essence of racism, the essence of it, I'm here, you're here, based on whatever criteria it is. Religion, skin color, area of birth, whatever. You're prejudiced. They're prejudiced. Anybody know anything about prejudice? <laughs> it's, a, it's a delusion in this person's mind. It becomes a delusion in this person's mind when their spirit of rejection sets in and they believe they belong in that place. Based on chronic negativity over the years well she says something else negative you guys don't have anything to do with us personally what are you doing asking me for a drink what are you doing talking to me Jesus said if you only knew if you only knew if you only knew oh my god that sentence if you only knew fits all across America in every church in this country the whole country loaded with carnal lukewarm gutless loser type Christians if they only knew if they only knew if you only knew you grew up with chronic negativity and it wasn't you if you only knew all those thoughts you had in your mind from childhood wasn't you had you only known that if you only knew about all the gifts of God you'd never be living a Mickey Mouse useless gutless Christian life you never do it if you only knew <coughs> wasn't your parents abusing you when you were young it wasn't your dad that left you somebody told him to leave you had you only known that wasn't your mother yelling and screaming had you only known you'd have looked at her differently you'd have never hated her you hated her when you were young had you only known What's he doing there? He's talking to a woman loaded with the demons of rejection. He detoured that way to go get her. He said, if you only knew who's talking to you and asking you for a drink, you would have asked him, had you only known those negative thoughts in your mind are not you had you only known you would have come to the Lord and gotten deliverance from them had you only known that wasn't you thinking hating yourself running yourself down developing a low self-esteem had you only known that you'd have never ended up like this today no way You would have asked him, he would have given you something much, much greater than this well, Jacob, and that water. Oh, there's so much more waiting for you. As a born again Christian, you settled for your Christian life years ago. You settled for it. You settled. Like you did when you got married. Remember that one? You just settled. God had a maid all picked out for you, but you knew better. So you settled for somebody else. Had you only known, had you only known. 
Had you only known the gift of God. Had you only known. You could have had not just water and a well, Jacob. No, you could have had living water. Yeah, you settled. You settled in your ministry. We just do this. We just do that. You settled. Wow, but if you'd only known all of this was ready for you. Had you only known it, you'd have never settled for anything. You'd never settle for anything from this day forward. The woman says, sir, negativity. Can't you see it? The spirit of rejection from childhood trains the person's mind to think chronic negative things. You don't have any bucket. You can't draw anything. You've got a blockage. Oh, it's another failure. This isn't going to work. You started when you were six. Remember when you were molested? Click, he got in. From that moment on, it started to go negative. You start having these thoughts in your head. They're all negative. Personal thoughts. You're no good. You're not attractive. You're fat. You're stupid. You're ignorant. You're going nowhere. Chronic negative thoughts. Had you only known, they weren't yours. Had you only known that, it wasn't you. You'd have never ended up like this. Never. Had you only known, you would have reached out for living water. You'd have been a completely different person today. You don't have any water. You can't draw any. Where's your bucket? I got a bucket. You don't got a bucket. Where's that living water at? I don't see it here. This is Jacob's well. This is a big deal. Do you know anything about Jewish history? Are you greater than Jacob? What's she doing there? Negative comparing. She's comparing things negatively. That's what that spirit does. He gets you to compare yourself with somebody else. As soon as you start comparing yourself with somebody else, sooner or later you're going to come up short. The demons will trick you. They always get you to compare yourself with somebody who's bigger, better, and smarter than you. And they help you later when you got low self-esteem. Then you compare yourself with someone who's smaller, weaker, and stupider than you, just so you can feel better. I'm not even joking. Are you greater than blah, blah, blah? Again, Jesus knows he's not talking to her. He knows he's not talking to her. He's talking to her child abuse. He's talking to her dad who left her. He's talking to her childhood wounds. She always says something negative to him. He knows that. Some of you have got parents that are barnyard crazy. When you were young, you thought that was your mom and dad acting a fool, talking a fool. It was not. It was not. Jesus sees that she asked him about living water. Oh, the Holy Spirit's moving now. See that little lead in he got there? She switched over from negativity to something the Holy Ghost was interested in. Living water. So he makes his move. He says, whoever drinks of this water in Jacob's well will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give 
shall never thirst. Now, now he's reaching into the, her spirit. Now. He went past the rejection demon and went in there. Brilliant, to say the least. The water I give, not that well, I give, will be not just a bucket, but I will give him a pege, a fountain of water. You dig down and get the water there and then you bring it up. No, a fountain cut starts there and flows up. That's what I've got for you, Mrs. Rejection. Three chapters later, Jesus mentions it again, only this time he's back in Jerusalem. Do you remember this story? Yeah, he's at the feast and he's yelling. Jesus sometimes was a Vivian type preacher. <laughs> sometimes he yelled. Sometimes he spoke gently and lovingly. Sometimes he was boom, killing it. He's killing it here. He starts yelling. Kradzo means to yell or scream. If any man comes to me and drinks, he that believes on me, he starts quoting out of Isaiah. As the scripture said, on their belly shall flow Rivers of living water Had you only known Had you only known father had reserved living water from you you would have never sunk into chronic obsessive negative thought disorders You'd have never spent a minute of time running yourself down Comparing yourself to somebody else, getting more depressed. You'd have never done it, had you only known. This he was speaking of the Holy Spirit that he would give to those who believe on him. Because the Holy Ghost was not given because Jesus was not yet glorified. What is a pege? We have one. Fountain Hills has a big game. It's physical, it's not spiritual. Don't go out there and jump in there and <laughs> expect to come out with a gift of knowledge. Oh, <laughs> cut, cut that, knock that off. The woman said, Sir, Curios is Lord. She said, Lord, you've, you've piqued my interest. See? He's, he's, he's sharing with her spiritual things about the Holy Ghost and for that second she leaves her demon of rejection behind in her mind and she reaches out and says you're right I want this water now let's see now how does this work so she starts to think carnally as he's speaking spiritually Typical American Christian Carnal thinking about spiritual things leads us nowhere It gives us nothing well where give me this water so I don't have to come here anymore because I Get all the crap jobs and I've gotten them since I was this high I Get the crappy jobs. I'm the doormat in the family I have to come get the water all the time. Is there any way you can get me out of this stinking mess? I don't want to come here and draw this water anymore. I'm tired of it. It was about a mile out of town, so it was two mile round trip with buckets. Jesus said, well, now that I've got your interest here on spiritual things, even though you're looking at it carnally, 
Let's go to that spirit of rejection from your childhood. Let me talk to you about it for a second. Go get your husband and bring him here. He'll want this living water too, won't he? Oh, no, no. I don't have a husband. <clears throat> well, that's true. You don't have a husband now, he says. You have had five husbands, and the guy you've got now is a live-in. What's going on there? Standard operating procedure for the spirit of rejection. Absolutely textbook. He leaves a trail in the person's life of chronic broken relationships. All the relations start out good. They look good. Guess what happens? The first one's the biggest disappointment. The first ones, the demons are telling the person, listen, your family's crazy. They don't respect you. They don't see all your great assets. You need to get the heck out of here. I've got a guy for you here. Here's, here's a spouse for you. This one looks good. You can find the love from this person you didn't get from your parents. No problem. Look at them. They look great. Yeah, that was number one. Then that blows up. Number two, that one blows up. Number three, that one blows up. Number four, boom, that one blows up. Five husbands? That's a lot. Now. <laughs> Back then, that was unheard of, having five husbands. That was a freak. That's like having 15 husbands now. Five husbands back then? I'm not kidding you. That was a, she was a social outcast. She was human garbage. She was trash. She was a whore. She was a nothing. And a nobody. She didn't know. Had she only known that it was him all those years, had told her she was a nothing and a nobody had she only known well there's a big gap in between that verse which we didn't get that's verse 18 here's verse 19 Wow I'd have loved to have heard the rest of that conversation but whatever was said, she came to this conclusion. I may have been a nothing and a nobody in my whole life, and I'm a Samaritan, and we're idol worshipers, and we're this and that, but after talking to you for a while, bing, you gots to be a prophet. Oh. No, she still didn't get it. She just doesn't know. Prophet? No. Prophets. A bunch of them out there. There was only one of this person. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. She goes, well, since he's a prophet, I better get this Samaritan Jewish thing straightened out. I got a chance to get my theology worked out. So her the rejection demon takes over in her mind and he gets her to go religious. Many people with rejection demons and chronic negative thoughts are helped by demons to do Bible studies. Because they know it's not going to do them any good. It's all head knowledge. It's not heart knowledge. So she says, hey, we got this big controversy here between these two mountains, Mount Moriah and Mount Garrison. Why don't you straighten this thing out for me? Our fathers worship in this mountain. 
in Samaria But you guys went to Jerusalem now who's right here since I got a prophet here. I should be able to get this cleared up Well, here's the mountains right there San Belay, 300 years before the birth of Christ, had built a temple on this mountain, Mount Gerizim. And then, of course, this is the famous one here, where the temple, Herod's temple was, right? And that's where the Jews worship, and that's where the Samaritans worship. The problem was when the Samaritans let the Gentiles in, the Gentiles always bring their idols in. And so it's mixed. You can't mix. You cannot drink out of the cup of the Lord and then go drink out of the cup of demons. You can't eat off the table of the Lord and then go eat off the table of demons. Can't do that. They couldn't do that. Jesus uh, settled the argument, didn't he? Not. He says, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither of those mountains will mean a thing. What did you just say? People spend $4,500 to fly her Jerusalem back. They get a hotel. They get a few free meals. Somebody throws them in the Jordan River. That's a great trip. $3,500 to go to Jerusalem. Okay, that's a fine trip, but it has no significant spiritual benefit that's a tourista there's a new sheriff in town now the old law and the old system of worshiping has now been replaced the temple and the holy of holies was where the holy ghost resided the Holy Ghost is the presence of Jehovah, Yahweh. Oh, this blew her mind. I can't believe it. I'm trying to get this theological doctrine all worked out. That's what Christians like to do. They fight over doctrine. He said, this mountain and that one, he's telling me neither of them are any good they're both worthless I wasn't expecting that answer if you hang around the Lord very long you'll get a lot of answers you're not expecting <laughs> this appears to be blasphemy from a tourist standpoint they make a lot of money off of us flying over there and oh having a great time in the shops he says you don't know what you're worshiping because they were idol worshipers he says, we know what we worship because salvation is ek comes out of the Jews. He's talking about himself. He said, the hour is coming and it's now here when true worshipers. What in the world did he just say? There are the Samaritans. There's all the Jews. Now you've got a third category here of what? True worshipers. Can you say drop a bomb? You mean to tell me the Jews are not true worshipers? And the Samaritans are not true worshipers? You mean to tell me this mountain, Moriah, is not where we worship? Gerizim's not where we worship? You mean to tell me this whole thing is wrong? Yes, I do. It's all wrong. That's, that's nuts. That's insane. <coughs> no, no, no. In the new world order that I'm bringing, Jesus said, the temple is there. The Holy of Holies is in here. You don't worship in the inner or outer court anymore. That's a tourist attraction. You now worship in here. Yeah. 
You don't go to a place to worship. You're already there. Right now, this poor woman with her brain loaded with rejection demons is spinning around like the exorcist sequel. <laughs> she can't believe what he just told her, and she knows he's a prophet at a minimum. But now she's starting to think differently about him. Before she thought he was a prophet, something different here. This statement also was crazy nuts. People are supposed to seek God out to worship Him. That's what everybody was taught. You got to hunt for God, you got to go find. What you mean he's hunting for me? Had you only known when you were little those voices of chronic negativity in your head were not yours. They were not God. Had you only known when the demons told you God's disappointed with you. Oh, you're in a legalistic religion. So you got to measure up here and there and here and there. Had you only known that wasn't God talking to you. That was humans lying. Demons making stories up. Had you only known God has been looking for you since before you were born. Father seeks Father's looking. After you got raped when you were young or beat up when you were young, this rejection demon got in clunk and he started to run you down. He made you feel second class, deficient. And then he extrapolated that feeling, click onto God. So he gave you the impression God was looking at you going, man, you're not measuring up. You're not doing what's right. <clears throat> Had you only known that was a pack of lies and that Father was actually looking for you. You would have never turned out like this. Never. You hear Vivian mention your destiny? Psh, you'd be running in it had you only known. Yeah, there it is. The inner man of the human being has four layers your mind, your conscience, your spirit, your soul. That's your inner man, your spirit man. Is now the Holy of Holies. And Father is seeking you to worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for you. Back to John 4 God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, this verse is routinely misinterpreted, but it's easy to fix. Paul explained it. There are celestial bodies and there are terrestrial bodies. There's spirit beings and there's earthly beings, is what he was saying. Right? Well, spirit beings have bodies, they're spiritual bodies. Have you ever heard of an out-of-body experience? If you've been in New Age, you've had them. <laughs> you've been partying. <laughs> I 
Well, you had a body when you were out of body. Correct? That's right. Hello. God is a spirit. He has spiritual substance. What's it made out of? I don't know. I don't know any of those answers. I don't have that kind of knowledge. But I know it's a body because he's been seen. Spirits can be seen. Angels can be seen. Spiritual beings can be seen. And they see you. They look through you and they know if you're born again. Is that person born again? No. Yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes. They know exactly who's saved and who isn't saved by simply looking into the Holy of Holies in your spirit, man. They know who's wounded and who's hurt. They just look right into your soul. They see your wounds and they pick the wounds out. The devil picks them out, hit him there. We call them pushing buttons. Demons look right in there in your soul. They see your negative emotions, your self-hatred, your hatred of your granddad, whatever it was. Bingo, they push that button. If they can't get you to do it by manipulating your mind, they will send this guy over to do it. A relative, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker. Go over there and push that ignorant woman's buttons. I'm not even joking. It happens all the time. You know it does. They that worship him must worship him where? In a temple, in a church, in a building. In truth. He's actually seeking you out. You haven't been rejected by God. He's trying to corral you to come in. The woman said, now, wait a minute, this guy doesn't seem to be a prophet anymore. He's a little deeper than that. I never heard anything like this before. Oh, maybe he's the Messiah. The Messias is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Moshiach, which means the Messiah. And he will be called the Christos, which is the anointed one. Samaritans and Jews knew all about the Messiah. Common knowledge. She's starting to look at him going, is this? No. Could this be? No. When he comes, he will tell us all things. We'd already done that to her, so he just, Jesus just admits it. Ego imi is the Greek phrase that's saying the same as the Hebrew fit phrase for I am that I am and go in me her mouth hits the bottom of Jacob's well <laughs> and her rejection demons in her brain are spinning like a pinball machine and the woman freaks and bolts for home You know she bolted. Why? She left her water pot. She was sent there because she's the doormat and the gopher and the nobody in her unit at where she lives. And her main function in life is to bring the water pot back with water in it. <laughs> She's so shocked now. She's so stunned. She forgets why she went to the well and runs home and leaves her water pot behind. What was God trying to tell her to do? Listen, take that self-loathing. Take all those negative thoughts about yourself. Take your childhood. Put it in your pot and leave it. Leave the pot with me. She had a lot of it. Let me tell you something. I, I do marriage counseling and been a counselor for 35 years. Just trust me on this one. I can't prove it. If you've had five, five husbands, you're shot. <laughs> that was a freebie. If you're living with a sixth loser, 
You're double shot, baby. You've given up. And they've given up on you. Don't let's just be totally blunt about it. Since this isn't a church and I'm not a pastor, I just say whatever I want. After six men, you're physically, mentally, and emotionally shot. You don't look good anymore. You're sagging all over. <laughs> what you're doing there on the sixth one is you're grasping at survival. You got to live. Your last step is whoring yourself out. You can't do that anymore because you looked in the mirror. It's hard to be a whore when this is drooping down there and that's falling down here. This thing's dropping there. That's popping out there. Listen, not a, not a big demand for whores looking like that. So that's out. So option two, homeless, that's out. So what do I got to do? I got to settle again for another loser. All of a sudden, living water gets past the rejection demon. All of a sudden, whatever else he said to her, which was miraculous, got past that stinking demon in her brain. Whenever I counsel somebody that's had multiple marriages, and I'm an expert in that area, did you know that the person has picked up demons from every spouse they were ever married? So during deliverance, I get the names of these spouses. And all those spirits come out. I switch names. Bob. Harry. Dick. George and demons come out from each. I'm not making this up. I'm not joking. Men as well. No, seriously. You marry somebody, you get their demons. They transfer, period. It's that simple. You don't have to be a Rhodes Scholar to figure that one out. Then they go get the kids. Then the kids start acting like the jacked up parents. You ever adopted a kid? I feel sorry for you. Hey, you're in some trouble now. Because you got the spirits from that family that you don't even know. All of a sudden, your kid starts acting weird. Really? Hey, folks, the spirit world is real. It really is. What's God telling you here? Just... Gather up all these negative thoughts from your childhood, from your parents, from their rotten marriages. Put them in your pot. And just leave them with him. If you have to, run from your pot. This woman had no idea the Holy Ghost was recording this story. She didn't know it was going to be in the Bible. She didn't know she was going to help. Literally, probably millions of people, I don't know how many, I'm guessing, millions of people over the centuries. She did not know that. This is a fantastic story. She was teaching us what to do. Leave your pot with the Lord. Run from it. So she goes back home. See? And people that have rejection spirits, they have low self-esteem, and they don't feel good about themselves. That's why they settle for stuff. But they can't just stay there all the time. They've got to have some hope. So they try to boost themselves up by... Acting like they know something. She did the same thing. She runs home and says, hey. She's got information now about living water. Uh, these two mountains are, no, are useless. There's a new sheriff in town. She's got all this information. And so finally, 
I've been a nothing and nobody all my life, but now I've got some good information and I can share it with people and I'll have some self-esteem and I'll have some respect. People with rejection to you would give anything, anything to have some self-respect and some attention from somebody and some of your time and your interest in me as a person. They would love that. I've had a hundred different counseling sessions over the years where an hour or so into the session I've only said one or two words. But I have listened to that person talk to me. And in an hour or so they think I'm the most wonderful person that ever lived. <laughs> and I have done nothing for them except respect their story and listen to them and give my full attention to them and their lives and I've done nothing but just listen to them even people that come to see me some of them come to see me because somebody forced them to because somebody else knows they're jacked up <laughs> and they don't really like me right out of the gate. They're very leery of me. They're suspicious of me. They're looking at me like, ooh, who are you, you turd? <laughs> it goes away in 30 minutes. As I just sit there, I listen to what they have to say, what they're saying is important to me. I am paying attention to them and no one else. I'm undistracted. I'm focused on them. And they suddenly warm up it happened here what was he doing talking only to her he said sweetie if you only know how much I love you if you only knew all those voices they were not yours. It was him. If you only knew it wasn't your mom and dad. It wasn't your mom and dad. It was their spirits, their wounds, their childhood hurts dumping on you. Had you only known that, you could have been eligible for living water. You could have been a true worshiper. Worshiping not in a building or a church. You are the church of God. You are the living tabernacle. The Spirit of God dwells in you, not in the church. <clears throat> so she goes home and she's feeling great. Hey, guess what happened? And she tells him this spectacular story that she heard a mile away at Jacob's well. Let me take a break here and tell you about this woman with six men. Here's what happens. When you're young, the devil uses people to hurt you. It's a setup. Spirits are assigned to every single family on the planet Earth. Like auditors and trauma in the home is the door opener to this spirit so when a child who is spiritually defenseless is wounded or beat or hurting or raped or molested or done whatever this rejection spirit makes his move he enters the child's mind and hides in the front part of the brain right here because that's your decision making area of the brain frontal cortex right here and the first thing he does to the child is he starts putting thoughts in the child's mind 
and the thoughts are nothing thoughts. Like, there's a pup, look at that puppy, look at that balloon, look at that picture, look at, there's red, look, that's pretty, look over there, look here, look there, look, 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 look. He keeps doing it over and over and over. Why? Spirit beings don't get tired. Humans and animals get tired. Spirits don't. They have focus and a job to do, and they just keep doing it. Angels don't get pooped. Demons don't get tired. They get tired of the Holy Ghost kicking their face in, but I mean, in terms of fatigue, spirit beings don't get tired. So he keeps after it. He keeps doing it. And then something happens to the child, which is life-shattering. What is it? At a certain age, the child does something that ruins the rest of their lives. What is it? The child looks. The child looks at the balloon, at the puppy, at the flag. Oh, there's a kite. Look at that. There's a flower. Look. The child looks over there. Then what happens? He's got him. He's got the child. The child, being little, doesn't know the difference between his thoughts and their thoughts. Then he switches gears. He switches like that. Bang! To negativity. And he starts putting negative thoughts in the child's mind. Not balloons and puppies anymore. Now it's, you're no good. Your parents don't love you. You're stupid. You're fat. You're ugly. You're an idiot. You'll never amount to anything. You're like this person. You're like that person. The child doesn't know the thoughts are not theirs. They think it's their thoughts. When my son was uh, very young, like three years old, every time I didn't give him something like an ice cream or something, he would say, hey, and he would say that every time, you know, like, because I didn't do what he wanted, he would get that thought, he would say, hey, hey. Did you hear that? Yeah. What a great statement. Hey, YouTubers, this guy sitting over here just said, what's your name, sir? Uh, Greg. Uh, Greg sitting over here, he said when his son was three years old, uh, every time the, the kid didn't get what he wanted or needed, he would say, a thought would come into his head, you hate me. Did you hear him? That was him. The child, that was not the child's thought. He's only three. Children don't have thoughts like that at three. The demon of rejection put that thought in this woman's head at the well when she was only three. The three-year-old doesn't know the difference between their thoughts and their thoughts. So how do you get them to realize that? We'll get to that in a minute. He's not done here. The next trauma in the child's life is socialization. And it's usually kindergarten or first grade. Now hell starts to really come to breakfast. Now the demons of rejection in all the different kids, they start manipulating the kids like puppets. And the kids that they've got trained like that one or another one to be chronically negative or violent 
or verbally abusive, they use those kids to hit the shyer ones, the more introverted ones, and the low self-esteem, shaky ones. And they use the other kids to beat on these kids. The spirit in that kid is using that kid to hurt that kid. As they grow up later on, we call it bullying. Bullying is big now. Then this spirit that attacks the child starts to act like a gatekeeper. And he starts letting in under other spirits. The first one he usually lets in is fear. Fear is the one spirit the devil uses on with every other spirit. All spirits team up with fear demons. Because fear demons control the person's emotions. <clears throat> They let in other spirits, lying spirits and spirits of infirmity and different spirits. They're like a gatekeeper. They open the door, these other demons come in. And fear is usually the first one. The child starts to develop, as that man just said, strange anxiety disorders. Can you hear that child screaming to his dad, you hate me? Can you hear the fear in the sentence? Can you hear that? I hear it clearly. The child had fear in that sentence. He'd already had already had a fear spirit in him. The devil uses fear to control human beings. It's a great weapon. Then as the child goes through puberty, he manipulates that depending on the type of abuse and the type of stress the child has had to go through. If the kid was molested significantly or raped, superpowered demons can enter the child's body. Homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism. And when the child goes through puberty, their sexuality is morphed. And they start to develop hyperactive lust issues, same-sex attraction, gender confusion. Now this rejection spirit uses the lust spirit to manipulate the child. And the lack of love and affection and attention they didn't get as a child, the demons now train them to get that from other people romantically and sexually and sensually. He tricks them and he tells them that is love. The woman at the well, five husbands. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? One loser from one loser to the other. Click, 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 click. Looking for love in every wrong place she could possibly look for. They helping her every step of the way. Lying spirits. They're great. They're gorgeous. Oh, they make a good spouse. Lust spirits, oh, we're compatible, oh, that's great, let's, let's hump like rabbits. Three months later, hell comes to breakfast in that house. It's pure hell. Why? It was a setup. To do what? Continue to beat the person down, and down, down, down. One relationship breaks up, the demons would simply send her another guy. 
How does he do it? Simple spiritual marketing. This person comes in, they look good, they seem good, they're funny, they're flirtatious, they seem to have the same interests you do. Had that one happen to me. You think you're dating somebody, boy, they just seem interested in everything I'm doing. Uh, wish I'd have had somebody like Mike Smith around years ago. I would have really liked to have met him, but I didn't. You find out that person doesn't give a rat's fanny about anything you do later on. Why? It's a setup. It's a plant. They're plants. They're demonic plants. If you're single, the demons are now, as I'm speaking to you, working one up for you. The cauldron is spinning, and Mrs. or Mr. Wonderful is about ready to drop into your lap. Oh, great. If you go to church and you're a Christian, somebody will give you a prophetic word. That's the guy. <laughs> Where'd that come from? A friend of the rejection demon, a familiar spirit. That's another Bible study. What happens then? After five husbands and a live-in, after this whole process is over, what's the rejection demon doing? What's his goal? Isolation. Family gone, friends gone, spouses gone, lovers gone, and the person ends up alone. Sisters gone, brothers gone, fights, relationships broken. They're trying to get the person alone so they can finish them. And that's what happens to them. She, had she not gone to the well that day, would have ended up alone. This live-in wouldn't have worked out. I live in Sun City with the old people. Yep. You got me an old person to get in there. <laughs> You ain't going to believe this. There's a truckload of Sun Cityites living together. I'm not even joking. Sun Cityites. <laughs> They're living together in their 70s and 80s. I'm not making it up. I'm not making that up at all. I've seen them. I've met them. I know them. What's going on there? Break, 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 break. Oh my God, this is my last ditch effort not to end up alone. I'll live with this fool. I'm not kidding. This demon wants to isolate you. He wants to get you alone. He just wants you and your mind and him. Because he controls your mind. Well, I don't have mind control. You have chronic negative thoughts that float into your mind all day long, and you think you're not under control. You're not being controlled. Who's the fool now? Those negative thoughts never come from God, so there's one source been removed. If the thought comes in and you don't want that thought, that's the second person out of the equation. That only leaves one person left. If it ain't you and it ain't God, who is it? Who put that thought in there? Where'd you get that thought? They let in a spirit of infirmity years ago, and gradually this thing makes you ill. You start coming up with weird illnesses, bowel issues, fatigue issues, organ problems. Women have womb issues, weird headaches, arthritis and joint issues. He's trying to isolate you and then kill you. If you don't believe me, you go to any care center here in Maricopa County tomorrow. Go tomorrow. Just walk in. They won't stop you. And looking down the aisle, look down the aisle, look in the doors. The doors are open. They're all open at the care center. They don't have any security there. You just walk in. If you walk in like you know what you're doing, you just go anywhere. Look in the rooms. 
Look at somebody laying there. They look like a corpse. Nobody comes to visit them. Nobody cares about this person sick as a dog. They don't have any relatives. All their relatives left them years ago. How did it all start? When you were three, trauma as a kid, he got in. He took your life. And he used your mind to get you there. Alone, sick, and dying. Had she not gone to the well that day, her future would have been exactly what I just said. Well, how do you know so much? I don't know so much. I just have different experiences than you've had. I've had a lot of experiences other Christians have never had. I'm not better than anybody else, but I am unique. Another term would be odd. Uh, <laughs> as a counselor, you have a different view of life. It's different than somebody that loads trucks or somebody that works on computers. It's a totally different existence. It's a people business existence. And that's why God gave me this revelation about the spirit of rejection and what he does to people. He takes over their mind. He controls them through fear and their emotions. He causes these relationships to break. He isolates them alone. He makes them sick. And he kills them by themselves. The woman in the well, when she got married the first time, she was a hot babe. Oh, yeah. She had a booty. She had it. Ooh. Five husbands later, she looked like she crawled out from under a rock. Yeah, your body don't hold up as you get older. Trust me. Stuff ain't working anymore when you get my age and beyond. Sorry about that. I hope you didn't get a visual. <laughs> I'm telling you, people wear out. You need to listen to me. You're going to wear out. And after five husbands, she's on a short fuse. Now she's just living with guys. The rejection demon wasn't done with her yet. After the live-ins are over, then you're alone. Then he moves in. It'd be better off if I were dead. It would be better off if I weren't around anymore. Suicide becomes a natural thought at the end of his nightmare. Why? The person wants to escape from a miserable life that started at three. And now at 73, I'd just rather go. Had you only known you could have gotten rid of him when you came to Christ. Can you imagine the shame that ought to be on churches that isn't because they're too ignorant? Can you imagine letting a mega church, 5,000 people sitting there, loaded with rejection demons, loaded with spirits of infirmity, mentally ill, emotionally ill, physically ill, and leave them in that condition? Week after week, month after month, decade after decade. You call that Christianity? I'm sorry. No, I, I bagged that several years ago. The homie don't play that anymore. <clears throat> if you only knew the gift of God and who's talking to you right now. It's not me. I'm using God's word. You could have gotten rid of that rejection demon at age 7, at age 12, at age 21, at 42, tonight. You can get rid of him tonight. You get rid of him tonight, it'll save you one or two marriages, depending on your age. <laughs> I'll save you one or two calls to Brother Mike. Hey, this one blew up too on me. Come on in. 
You get rid of that rejection demon that low self-esteem That settling Attitude he gave you just settle it settling for that Last week right in my office 40 something years she was married to him cheated on her abused her verbally abused her controlling dominating Settled Stayed it just stayed in the relationship settled Who told her to settle? It wasn't her family. No, they told her to go. I Know who told her to settle? It was that spirit of rejection when she was molested at five? He told her no You can't get divorced. God hates divorce. I Hate divorce too. I want you to stay with this man the demons will always want you to stay with somebody who's abusing you the most. Had you only known, you could have gotten rid of me. There's the final summary of it. I think I'm going to skip this chart. Sorry about that. There they are. Husband one, two, three, four, five. Every one of those husbands was a plant Every one of your marriages and relationships almost all of them have been plants They look good initially and boom they blow up What's the final phase of this spirit? Everybody rejects you. Your sister's mad at you. You haven't talked to her in 15 years. Your brother left the family years ago. He hated his parents. He's been gone. He never talks to you. Kids don't like you. They don't have any respect for you anymore. They don't call anymore, except when they need something. Then the kids call. Come on, I need this. Can you loan me? Can you give me? Can you loan me? Can you give me? Can you loan me? Can you give me? After that, they don't have any interest in you. You suck. You think I'm joking? Have a couple kids and you'll learn about it. He severs every relationship that's positive in your life. He cuts them off. And he only leaves, like Job, the ones that can hurt you the most. He left Job his wife. <laughs> he left Job the messengers. He killed everybody out in the field except one guy. Don't kill him. He's got to go back and tell Job he's lost everything. The devil will always save somebody in your life to bring you some bad news. He brought in Job's three friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the church people They got all the answers. They know how to fix you. They know what's wrong with you. They give you all kinds of advices Nowadays in our charismatic churches, they go beyond advices now. They're all prophets and apostles Have you ever met any of these idiots? I'm prophet this and apostle that oh, this stuff's frightening. It's, it's like 24 7 Halloween And they got great advice to give you the Lord told me this and that and then it all ends up bad you know what the Lord told you? It's written right in God's holy word. I share it here every week if you're interested. If you're not, you don't need to come. Back to John 4. Let's wrap it up. They said to the woman, Wow. This, this story is so great. After she became a Christian, after she received Christ, after... The church people still rejected her. Pastor, I've got a great idea for a new ministry. Your idea sucks. Oh, God, I'm wounded. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe we should do this and that and that and this. We don't think so. Oh, God. Oh. I'm going to leave this church and go to another church to get wounded. Oh, I go over here. Oh, another stab. 
Pretty soon they've gone to so many churches that now they're a plague. They walk in the door expecting to get rejected. So that puts them in a bad mood. So now they're spreading negativity among their new church. The mega churches overcame that though. They don't have anything to do with them. They just shuffle them in like cattle and they shovel them out that door. They don't have nothing to do with them. They're just looking for them to put something in the offering. They're not going to have anything to do with these people. These people are all sick. They had enough problems on the church board. Stealing money, <laughs> adultery, uh, fornication, child prostitution. That's on the church board. Why? Because nobody knows anything about the spirit of rejection. What I've just told you tonight, you have no idea. No one knows anything about this. The churches are filled with the spirit. They don't know he's there. We don't believe because you told us the only self-respecting thing she wanted. Hey, I'm bringing some great news about the Messiah. Finally, I know something that has some value. <laughs> they pop her balloon. Yeah. It's happened to you. Don't tell me it hasn't. Come up with a good idea. Somebody poo-poos it. You sink, you feel that pain in your soul. Oh, God, that's him. That's him. Yeah, then, then he starts to give you a root of bitterness. He starts to tell you stuff. Can you believe they said that to you? I can't believe that. That's inconsiderate. He calls himself a man of God. That's unbelievable. I can't believe that church did that. That's not, that must not be a real church. We're teaching false doctrine. <laughs> God Almighty, I can't believe it. You need to go to another church because you're up here and they're down here. He actually starts pumping you up with lies. You walk into the other church, they were waiting for you before you got there. <laughs> yeah, they got. Here's the gal that takes offenses. Come on over here and take a dump on her. <laughs> you think I'm joking? This is exactly what happens. The demons pull this person out, they come over and dump on that person. It's a plan, they're setups. They dumped on her. Hey, we didn't listen to you. We we got it for ourselves. He says, "We heard him ourselves. We know this is indeed Christos, the Anointed One, the Savior of Cosmos, the Savior of humanity. We know this is him." What happened here? Ah, my God! The ultimate irony. How does it get any better than this? The Jews crucifying the Samaritans took him in. That was my own enjoyment. I didn't think you would get that. I didn't think you were going to get that. See, I just done that for me. I got to have something. The Samaritans, who the Jews thought stunk and they were racist, they thought they were trash. They got it. The Jews didn't get it. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How many times would I have taken you? I guess. Hen gathers her chicks, but you would not do it. Your house is left to you desolate, which is exactly where the spirit of rejection leaves every single life he invades in total desolation. Why is the spirit so dangerous? Nobody knows he's there. You know what the first thing I did years ago in 2009? 2008 when I found out about it? I got him out. Yeah, that's right. As soon as I got that revelation, I had one of those holy shoot moments. <clears throat> I said, you gots to be kidding. I got this thing in my brain running me down for the last 40 years. This thing's got to go. Amen. What I wouldn't give to have every person I told this story to act like I did. And you know what? 
They don't. Nobody knows he's there. Nobody knows how he does it. How does this guy go from a happy two-year-old to that? I just showed it to you. He takes the person through phases. He strips the person of their assets. He leaves them with their deficits. He brings in other people to add to their deficits. Then they reject him. Then he leaves them there to die alone. Well, that's Skid Row. Hey, there's a Skid Row all over Maricopa County. Go into any care center. Come on, I dare you to do it. Go into any care center. They're all over Maricopa County. And that is the Spirit of Rejection's version of Skid Row. Here, they're just in the rooms, waiting to die, laying there, waiting to die. Because he's done with them now. And then, the spirit of infirmity that he let in gives the person some weird terminal illness, and they die. And he planned it for 40, 30, 50, 60 years. He planned it the day he got in that man's son when he was three. The plan was already there to take you through these phases, to infect you with these spirits, to give you these sicknesses, to give you these rotten relationships, five rotten husbands, and a live-in for this one person. Lights. pray then father God in the spirit of rejection here in America he's a monster he's a cold-blooded killer he's ruined so many people lives I can't even imagine it if I see him every week in my counseling practice I cannot comprehend 
what these spirits are doing throughout the rest of Arizona. I only see a miniature fraction of the people. I know it's the devil, Lord. I know it's Satan. I know he's behind all of it. And there are some people here tonight that have a spirit of rejection from abuse in childhood, from abuse in a, their first marriage, marital abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse. There are people here that have lust issues from sexual abuse, rape. This spirit of rejection has taken advantage of every person he enters. There are people here tonight, Lord, that have strong spirits and they love you and they care about you. But they have this terrible, chronic, negative thought disorder. And when they pray, they feel better and then they go right back to chronic, negative thinking. And I know it's him. He's blocking their destiny. He's blocking their future. He causes them to take offenses and get mad at people, mad at family members, mad at somebody at work. They're constantly using their anger and their fears against them. Tonight is a night that those who want to be healed can be healed here at the Deliverance Center because they now know. They now know what he does, who he is, how he hurts people, how he ruins people's lives, how he lets in other spirits, how he wrecks marriages, how he ruins careers, how he steals finances, how he steals people's destinies, how he ruins marriages and then creates other bad marriages. It's him, Lord. I know it's him. And tonight, he is subject to the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. And he is subject to each person who is willing to repent and cast that spirit out of their brain and out of their body. Every person here tonight, Lord, I pray, that saw this presentation and recognizes they have a spirit of rejection from whatever, childhood or wherever, I pray that you will give them holy hatred for this demon, holy hatred for the works of the devil, holy hatred for living in sin, and holy hatred for thinking negative things and saying negative things. Because what they think and then what they speak destroys their lives and ruins their marriages and wrecks their finances and brings curses on themselves and their children. There are people here tonight, Lord, that have seen the spirit of rejection come down from their parents, hit them, and now their children have them. And their children don't know he's there. They don't understand why they're sick. They don't understand why everything falls apart. They don't understand how they're being beaten. And now their children are failures and losers. Now their children have chronic negative thought disorders. The demons move right down the family tree, but tonight it stops. If there's only one person here, one person is enough for me to get healed. But I know you want more. I know you want every person with a spirit of rejection. I know you want them set free. And I know you'll do it. I know you'll do it. You rotten devil, I'm talking to you right now. You spirit of rejection, you murderer. I'm talking to you right now. You better hope. You better hope that person 
that you're dominating doesn't turn on you tonight. I'm talking to you right now. You better hope they don't repent. You better hope they don't forgive those other people. You better hope they don't forgive their family and their siblings. You better hope they don't turn on you. You better hope they didn't understand what I said. You better hope they got distracted. Or you're going to be coming out tonight. You're going to leave these people. You're going to loose them. You're going to let them go. You got some bad problems tonight, boy. Bad problems. If you didn't do your job and some truth got in, you're going to have to face the Lord Jesus for they will know the truth and the truth will make them free. And you know that. You know that. Father God, this spirit has no chance of staying in your children if they turn on him. He has no chance of dominating them anymore if they will repent and fight him. They cannot stay. They will not stay. I know that. I know that. That marriage can be saved. That son or daughter can be saved. That life can be saved. I know that. I've seen it with my own eyes. I believe it. God's word says it. And right now, in the name of Jesus, now just stand up. If you're sure you have a rejection demon, you, you saw the presentation, and you know you got hit in childhood, something got in. And you have chronic negative thoughts from wherever. Your dad, your mom, your grandparents, you were adopted, you were molested, you were wounded, you were hurt. And this spirit entered your brain and started to take over. I'm going to pray for you now. Anybody else? Ten, ten more seconds. you got a rejection demon in your brain, and if you don't get him out of there, He's going to destroy your life. Listen to me carefully. These spirits don't quit. They do not give up. As long as you're alive, they will pursue you and torment you. They will not give up. They will not quit. They fear only one person, the Holy Ghost. They he is the only person the rejection spirit truly fears because he knows he can smash them if you will step out in your faith and repent and turn on him and turn on him and turn on him and turn on him. And turn on him. Did you hear me? And close your eyes. You have to go get that guy right there. Bring him up here, would you? That guy right there. You have to turn on him. Close your eyes. You spirit of rejection. I just saw the woman at the well. I know what you've done to her. I know what you did. You've done the same thing to me. You did the same thing to me. You, you ruined my life. You ruined everything. Now I'm going to turn on you right now. I'm going to turn on you right this second. I'm turning on you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm turning on you right this second. Come on. You just pray like I'm praying right now. I'm turning on you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I know when you got in. I know when you got in. Come on. I know when you got in. Come on. If you know when he got in, when he got in, call him out on it. When did he get in? If you don't know, that's okay. You don't have to exactly know. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, right now, I command you to come out of my body right now. In the name of Jesus, come out of there right now. I command you in the name of the Lord, you get out of my body right now. I bind your power in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, come out, is loosed in heaven. And I command you right now, the Son of the living God, I command you right now in Jesus' mighty name to get out of my body, to get out of my brain, get out of my family tree. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost and God's Word. Every spirit from my mother and my dad. Every spirit from my stepmom and my stepdad. I command you to go right now and get out of my body. Every ugly man that ever touched me. Every one of them. Come out right now. Every one of them. Come out right now. Come out right now. There he is. That's him right there. Come out right now. Every one of them. Come out right now. Every spirit of rejection from my childhood. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched my body, come out of me right now. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my mind right this second. Come out of my mind right this second. Come out of there, I said. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I said, come out right now. Come, come out right now. Come on, sweetie. Fight. Come out right now. Every spirit from my mother. Every spirit from my father. Every spirit from my uncle, you child molester. Come out of my body right now, you child molester. Come out of my body, you woman hater. Come out of there, you man hater. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right this second. Right this second. Come on. You do what I'm doing right now. Don't just stand there and do nothing. I'm modeling for you. I'm telling you what to do. YouTubers, just do exactly what I say. In Jesus' holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bind this spirit of rejection from my late husband, my late wife, my ex-husband, my ex-wife. I command you by the authority of the Word of God to come out of my brain and my body right now. Come out right now. Now, I said, I want my husband demons out of me right now. Right this second. Right this second. Hurry up! Hurry up! Come on, sweetie. Come on up. Come on, honey. Come on out now. Now, right now, raise your hands. Come on, get him out of there. Come on, get him out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Every spirit from my husband, come out now. Every spirit from my dad. Every spirit from my dad, come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit from your dad, child abuse, come out. Child abuse, come out. Who hurt you? Who did it? I don't know. I, I have no when did you turn on yourself? I don't know. When did you do it? How long have you been doing it? As a kid? Not that I recall. Come out right now. Were you bullied? No. What happened? I mean, sometimes I was... Come out. Huh? Sometimes I was... What's your name? Barry. Barry. Lord Barry doesn't know how this spirit got in there. He's hiding, but he knows he's in there. And I command, Barry commands this spirit of rejection to come out right now. Come out right now. Demon of fear, I bind your power right now. Go. Go now. Get out of her throat. Come out. There it comes. Go now. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out, you spirit. Come out right now. There he is. There he comes right there. Go now. Go now. Come out. Come out, you stinking spirit. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of fear. Come out right now. Sorry. Yell. Get out of my body right now. Louder. Come on, Kendra. Get out in Jesus' name. Come on, Kendra. Stomp. Kendra. Fight. Don't just look at me. Fight. Get out of my body right now. Spirit of infirmity, come out. Spirit of rejection from my mother, come out. Right now. Kendra, fight. Kendra. Kendra, fight harder. Kendra. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, get out of my body right now. Go! Spirit, go! Go now! All the men, every one of them, come out of there right now. Come out of my room. Come out. Adultery, go! Adultery! Adultery! Fornication, go! Come out of that body, go! Spirit of infirmity, out! Spirit of infirmity, out! Out! Who hurt you? A lot of them. Starting with who? Me, 
Who in the family? Brother, sexually molested. What was his name? George. George, raise your hands. Father God, is he still alive? All right, close your eyes. Father God, I lift George up to you right now, and I forgive him, and I bless him. Come out. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched you, come out now. I bless George right now, and I forgive him, and I command that spirit that got into my body when he molested me to come out now. George, come out now. Say it. Kendra, fight harder. You're just standing there doing nothing. Come on. Kendra, come out. George, come out right now. George, come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out right now. Kendra. Do it. Come on, sweetheart. Do it. Fight. Fight harder. Get out of my body right now. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out right now, every ugly man, every one of them. Go. Come out. And who hurt you? Family. What was the worst one? Who was the worst one? What? The worst one. Oh, um, my dad and my aunt. What'd your dad do? Abuse. What kind of abuse? Physical, mental. Slapping you around? Yeah. Did he beat your mom or yell at her in front of you? Both. Yeah. What's your dad's name? John. John, okay. Raise your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift John up to you right now. Is he still alive? John? Her dad, John. Yeah, we were, I was going to take her back. Hmm? Oh, back. Come on, are you going to repent of this? Yes. Go ahead. Father I God repent God. of having bad feelings about John. Get out of there right now. Get him out. Get him out of there. Come on, fight harder. Fight harder. Get out of my throat right now, you stinking spirit. Come out of there right now. Come out of my throat. Come out right now. There we go. Kendra, you're standing there doing nothing again. You, you came all this way to do nothing. I can't believe it. I'm in a state of shock. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. George, get out of my body. Here he is. Here's George. Here he comes. Come out of there, you pervert. Get out of my vagina and my womb and come out now. Come out of my throat. Go. Spirit of rejection, I bind your power. Hold that. Come out. Kendra, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my body. Get out of that body quicker. Hurry up. Hurry up. All the bad men, all the lies, they used you. They used your body. They used your money. Come out right now. Bad men. Wants the what? Him in the white shirt. No. Who is that is he guy? Allowed? I don't know, but he said that he wanted a badge. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he can, he can have one. Go now. Come out now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out now. Come on. Kendra. Atta girl. Now you got it. Atta girl. Stomp. Stomp. Your spirit of rejection. Come out of me. Spirit of rejection. Come out of me from my mother. Demons from my mother. Come out. Evil from my mother. Come out of me right now. Evil from my mother. Say it. What's left in there? I don't know, but I want to get it out. What's the symptoms? I need my eye to be healed. I need this to be fibroid eye disease. Oh, I'm fibroids? Bulging. I don't want that. Okay. We're going to reverse field on the devil right now. Okay. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, okay. in everything give thanks for this is the will of... Where'd she go? What? Oh. And everything gives thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Remember that? Yes. I want you to give praise and glory to the Lord for your bad eye. Go. Make her fight hard. Make her fight. She's just standing there. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. You spirit of rejection. Get out of my head. Get out of my body! Get out now! Rejection from my wife! Rejection from my parents! 
Rejection, come out of me. <laughs> Taking offenses, come out. Anger, bitterness, come out. Anger, self-hatred, self-loathing, come out. Self-pity, self-pity. Come out, self-pity, go. Now. Go now. Get out. Get out. Go now. Hurry up. Your rejection demon, you gave me a spirit of lust. Whoredom, come out. Whoredom, come out. Adultery, come out. Fornication, come out. Come out now. You fight harder. Fight harder. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Fight harder. Come on. Fight harder. Step out with your faith. Did you get molested? Did you get molested when you were a kid? Wave your hand at me. When you got molested, a spirit transferred in your body. A spirit from that molester transferred from that person and got in your body. You got to get that thing out of there. Come on, let's get him out right now. <coughs> now, I said. You child molester, I bind your power. I am no longer a victim. I am no longer a victim. I got the Holy Ghost. I've got God's Word. I'm taking authority over you. I'm forgiving my molester. I forgive my molester. And I command you to get out of my body right this second. Come out of my genitals. Come out of my womb. Come out of my stomach. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Come out. Depression. Come out. Lying spirit. Come out. Shyness. Cowardice. Shyness and cowardice. Come out now. Come out. Go. Go now. Go, 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 go. No, I'm who 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 after George? I called them all out. I called out. No, that was several. I called out each one right. by name. Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, what's your name? Denise. Oh, uh, Denise. Father, you see this beautiful woman standing there? She's got a good heart, and she's a loving person. I can feel her love. It comes out of her soul. She has a spirit in her body that taught her to use food as a comfort. And he's trying to give her diabetes, high blood pressure, and a heart attack. He's trying to kill her. Because she fell for it. The Holy Ghost is her comfort or not food. And she's going to repent of it right this second. I repent of using food as a comfort. I command this unclean spirit of food to go. Come out of me. Right now. Right now. I said, right now, there, here he comes, here he comes, there he comes, hold that, here he comes, go, in Jesus' name. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost, that is a tragic mistake, just repent of it, right now, and get that spirit out of there, go, come out now, quickly, come out quickly, go now, go now, go in Jesus' holy name, drugs, food, Sex, porn, come on, out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. There it is, keep coughing, come out. There it comes, there it's coming out right now. There they go. Thank you, Jesus, they're coming out right now. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is here. you got to step into the stream. If you only knew who is talking to you, if you only knew you could step in, to those streams of living water. Instead of sitting there with your mind trying to figure out what's going on, bind that spirit in your head. He's trying to talk you out of your miracle. He's using your IQ against you. 
Reach out with your childlike faith and bind that thing and step out into the moving of the Spirit. Hurry up. Go. <coughs> get out of my brain. Get out of there. Stop telling me to eat when I get anxious. Come out. Stop it. Stop telling me to go to food during stress periods. Stop it. <laughs> there he is. Here he comes. There they come right there. There they go. 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 Food. Food, I bind your power. Go. Food. Food. Unclean spirits of addiction. Go. Go. Go, I said. Go now. Go now. Right now. Food, come out. Drugs. Alcohol. Porn. Sex. Come out now. Come out now. Hurry up. Come on. You hate your ex husband. You hate your ex wife. You hate your current husband. You hate your current wife. That is going to destroy you spiritually. Come on now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Jesus. I'm so incredibly sorry. The devil used that person to tap a root of bitterness into my soul. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was a trick. The devil used him and used her to get to me. And I repent of it right now. Go. I bless that person. I forgive that person. Father, I ask you to give them blessings and mercy. I forgive them for lying to me. I forgive them for cheating on me. I forgive them for stealing my money. I forgive them for using my body. I forgive them for hurting my children. I forgive every demon from my husband and my wife. Come out of me now. Come out of me now. Every evil spirit from my ex-husband and my ex-wife. Come out of me now. Come out of me now, I said. Get out. Get out. Right now, move. Every pervert. Every spirit I picked up on porn. Every spirit I picked up at the club. I used to go to the clubs. I picked up lust demons. I picked up unclean spirits. I command the demons from the club, the bar. Come out of me now! Come out of me now! Come out! Unclean spirit. Pornography and chronic masturbation. Fantasy life. My sexual fantasy life. I curse you. I bind your power. I command you go! You filthy demon. Masturbating to pornography. I bind your power. Come out now! Come out now! Go in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of rejection, I bind your power right now. I'm taking command over you. You are not going to torture me anymore. You're not going to torture me anymore. Get out of my body right now. Some of you are not praying because you have coward spirits. You have coward spirits. You're shy. You have a coward spirit. Come on, just repent of it. Lord, I'm so sorry. I got a coward spirit. I'm afraid to do anything. The demons have got me boxed in. I got a coward spirit. I can't even cry anymore. I can't even cry anymore. They boxed in my soul. I can't even repent anymore. I can't even cry anymore. Oh my God. Oh my God, save me. I can't cry anymore. Oh Jesus, help me. My God, help me. I can't even cry anymore. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, help me. I can't even cry anymore. Help me. Satan, get out of my head. Schizophrenia, I command you to come out of my brain right now. Schizophrenia, come out now. Schizophrenia, come out of my son. Come out of my son right now. 
Get out of my side, I said. Come on. Fight back. Fight back. Don't sit there and do nothing. What's wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You got a coward spirit. You got to fight back to be healed. You can't just walk up here and go, can I get healed with your thumb stuck in your ear? That's not going to work. You got to learn spiritual warfare. You got to learn to fight. The devil knows how to fight. And he's not going to back off unless he's forced to back off. Now fight back now. Fight back now. Stop praying. Praying doesn't work with demons. Stop it. Jesus never prayed over demons. He took command. I charge you. You dumb and deaf spirit. The son of God said. I charge you. Come out of my son. Now. Come out of my door. Do it. Fight back. Keep yawning. Keep yawning. Those are spirits coming out. Keep coughing. Those are demons coming out. Lord Jesus, give me back my tears. Fight back. Fight back. Do something. Fight back. Do something. Fight. Do something. Fight. Fight back. I'm fighting harder for you right now than you're fighting for yourself. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? There's a lot wrong with it. I should not be fighting harder for you than you are for yourself. It's your life. Fight back now. I command you, Satan, let me go. Curses, I command you, break off of me. Pornography, I curse you. Come out of me. Come out, you pervert. Get that pervert out of there right now. I'm going to wait a second. There he is. Keep talking. Here he comes. There he comes right there. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hold that. Come out. Hold that. Come out. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Come out of the man of God. Get out of his groin. Come on. Come out. Man. Come out of his stomach. Come out. There he goes. Come out, Satan. Satan, I command you to come out. Is that your husband? Yeah. Satan, come out of my husband right now. Come out of my husband. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Go. You shall not let you come out. I said. Come out. 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 You went to a prostitute. When you were young, you went to a whore. You went to a prostitute. When you when you touched that woman, you picked up a spirit. You went to a club. You got a table dance. Yeah, you paid money to get a you paid money to pick up demons, fool. You got a table dance at a club. That woman was chuck full of demons. When she sat on your lap, they transferred into you, fool. Father, give me my tears back. Give me back my tears. Give me back my tears. Give me back. Give me back my tears, Lord. Give me my tears. Pray that way, Tom. Give me back my tears. Give me back my tears. Right now. I'm not, I'm not getting what you're asking for. You need to get your, your tears back and your broken heart. Let's go. Right now. Did you read those scriptures? Yes. Let's do it right now. I don't have them in my head. Go, Jesus name. Get out of my body right now. Please. No, don't no, stop praying. Do not say please. Get out of my body right now. There you go. Hey. Get the rest of those things out of there. You've been collecting them since you were in brain school. Now come out right now, I said. Come out right now, I said. Satan, come out of me right this second. I command anger to come out. Anger. Anger. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, Mike. Justin. Justin, what you need? Um, come out of that body right now. Don't look at him. Come out of that body right now. 
I'm just trying to come up here. Uh, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? Why'd you have him come up here? Come on, Bobby, right now. Come on. Listen, just repent and fight. It is an apple that fell from the tree. I'm not understanding you. Speak in the normal terms. Come out right now. What does that mean? Come out right now. Uh, anger, ADHD. You got ADHD? Yeah. That's a demon that got in your head. He's right there in your head. He got in when he was a little kid. Your life's going to be jacked up. Your, your future looks bleak. Your future is bleak. They're going to they're gonna screw you up bad. He can't hear you. That's right. <laughs> Come out right now. You got to get that thing out of there. It wasn't your fault. He got in when you were little. It wasn't your fault. Come out. Come out right now. Okay. It wasn't your fault. It came down from your parents. One side of the tree. Are these your parents? Yeah. Somebody in their grandpa or something. Click, click, click. Clicked in here. What? That came in after. That anger spirit's here. But the ADHD one's in your head. Ask the Lord to remove him. Ask the Lord he can deliver us. Only he can. He's just a vessel to pray. By the power of the Lord, it can happen. Listen, your life's going to go real bad. But when it does, will you come back and see me? Will you come back and see me? I'll be here for you. Come out right now. Come out right now. Who be abused him when he was a kid? Verbal. Verbal. Verbal abuse. Who be abused? Who hurt him? Who verbally abused you when you were young? Who yelled at you? Was it in school? Were you bullied? Yeah, it's cool. He was bullied in school. Bullied. Come out right now. Every ugly spirit from being bullied. Go! There it comes. There they go. Bully, come out. There he goes. Glory to God. Come out. Come out. There they go. He's had those spirits there since he was a kid. He got bullied in school when he was young. Come out right now. Get out. Come out right now. Go now. Go now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Loose this man of God right now. Loose the man of God. Loose him. Loose him right now. Frustration, come out. Frustration, go. Disappointments, go. Disappointments, go. Regrets. Regrets, come out. Yes. Regrets, come out. Come out. Come out. Regrets, come out. Regrets. There they are. Regrets, right there. There they're right there. Go. Regrets, come out in Jesus' mighty name. You lose this man of God. You lose his healing gift right now. Healing hands. Gift of healing. Loose it. Satan. Bullying. Fear. Fear. Being afraid. Childhood fear. Go. There it is. Here it comes. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Go. Come out right now. Come out now. Is he on porn when he was younger? Is he on porn when he was young? Pornography? Yeah. I think so. Hey, were you on porn when you were younger? Get out of that body, you stinking pervert. Come out of there. Come up. Come up. <coughs> Naked women. Images. Vaginas. Come out. There he here. Here it comes. There it comes right there. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Images of naked women. Go. Come out. Right now. Come out. Childhood pornography. Magazines. Go. Magazines. Come out. Go now. Perversion. Come out. Come out of there. Right now.
Come out in Jesus, Lord. Loose his ministry. Loose his healing gift. Loose him right now. There it comes. Glory to God. There it comes. What's his name? Paul. Paul, you're, you got a huge anointing right now. Just use it. Come on, Paul. Paul, you got the anointing. Go. Anything you want from God now, you can have it. Command them all to come out. They'll all come. There, see what I mean? They're come, there they come. You got the anointing, Paul. Take it. Paul, take it. Paul, fight harder. Fight, Paul. Fight, Paul. Fight, Paul. Let your tears go. You haven't cried anymore. You can't cry anymore. Come on. I break that curse over you. Right now, you can't cry anymore. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Come on. ADHD, I curse you. I bind you. Lose the man of God. <clears throat> you rotten devil, you're going to waste his life and make him a nothing to nobody. No. 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 He's going to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Satan, lose your hold. Tell the devil to let you go. No, brother. What is she talking about? She's giving like, no, I'm what? coming against pernicious anemia. What? A pernicious anemia. Yeah, arthritis. She, she's gonna have to cast that out. Let's go. Come on. Close your eyes and fight harder. Get angry, Kendra. Come on, where's your anger, Kendra? Come on. Come on, Kendra. Kendra, fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I cast out every spirit of perversion and whoredom out of my life right this second. You were promiscuous when you were younger. You were promiscuous. You let in a truckload of demons. Cast them out now. I renounce lust. I renounce pornography. I renounce chronic masturbation. I renounce demons from my wife or my husband. I renounce. What do you mean? Ah, uh, brother, I think uh, you told me a long time ago if I open the door, I think I open the door for the spirits to come in. How? Uh, What'd you do? Objectifying women. Oh, you mean scanning them? Yeah. Looking at them? I had that too. Yeah. Okay, raise your hands. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry for what I did. Tell him that. I'm so sorry for staring at women, looking at their breasts. There it comes. Go in Jesus' name. There it goes. Come out right now. There they come. They come out that easy if you repent. It's easy to get demons out if you repent. Getting rid of demons is a snap. Get out of that body right now, you pervert. Staring at brass. Come out. There he comes. Glory to God. There he comes. Now come out now. Come out, you pervert. Get out of my eyes, you lust -tiller. Go now. Chronic masturbation. Leave my genitals. Leave them. Come out right now, you pervert. Right now, I command you, lust, lust, <coughs> staring at women's breasts. Come out. There it comes. They're, they're coming out right now. There you go. You got the anointing. They're coming out right now. Glory to God. They come right out. If you repent, demons will collapse. Demons cannot stand repentance. If you repent and cry out to God, they collapse. They fold up like an accordion. Demons crash and burn if you will repent and step out with your faith. Now do something. Don't sit there and do nothing. Come now. Come out now. Come out now. Get out. Internet porn. Come out. Internet porn. I command you come out. Staring at vaginas. Come out of my body right now. Come out. Come out. Staring at genitals. Come out. Pornography. Come out. Lust. Come out. Fantasies. Sexual fantasies. Come out. Unclean spirit. Come out. Nancy's over there on the right. 
Yeah, she's doing nothing. She's doing nothing. Can't believe it. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out of there. There he is. Come out of his feet. Come out of his brain. Come out of his dreams. Sex dreams. Come out. Sex dreams. How's my girl doing? I feel something in my knees, so I don't know why. Yeah, well, there's a spirit in there, that's why. Raise your hands. There he goes. Lord Jesus, I'm using my authority right now, and I command this thing to come out of my knees right now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we bind Amish and Mennonite demons tonight. We bind religious spirits of legalism. Legalistic spirits, we bind your power. Spirits of fear from Mennonites, fear from Amish, fears of damnation and hell, fear from religion. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Fear. Of fear. fear of what? The devil? When that start? Uh, it's always the same. Oh, as a kid? Yeah. Uh, who instilled that in you? My stepfather. Stepdad. What was his name? Yeah, he hated me, Richard. Richard, what did he do to you? Uh, everything. He molested uh, you? He molested me. Uh, did he make you molest him? Yeah, he did. Masturbate yeah, him? Everything, yeah. Did he masturbate you? Yeah. Did you have anal intercourse? No. I don't know. He With to, you? He used to knock me out. He used to knock you out? Yeah. So I didn't know what when you woke up, did you feel odd in uh, your rectum? No. 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 Did he fondle you when you were knocked out? Yeah, yeah. How did he knock you out? Uh, Fist. Oh, he hit you and knocked you out unconscious. Oh my god. What was his name again? Richard? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Is he still alive? He's alive? All right, right now. Ready? Lord Jesus. I want you to hunt Richard down tonight. He has terrible spirits of anger and violence and perversion. I want you to go find Richard wherever he is tonight. Put your hands on him and tell him that you love him. And he never has to hurt anybody ever again. And that we are going to forgive him for hurting his son. We're going to forgive him right now for hurting him. And molesting him and fondling him. And physically beating him. That was not Richard doing that. That was a spirit of rejection. It was a spirit of violence and hate that attacked his son, stepson. And we forgive you, Richard, in the name of Jesus. All your demons are to come out of your son. He beat fear demons. Boy, and they must come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Take a breath and blow. Come out. Demon of fear, go. Come out of there. Richard, come out. Richard, come out. Come out of there, I said. Spirit of fear, come out. Hatred for Richard. Fear of Richard. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of his throat. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. I command Richard's go, demons go, to come go, out of me go, right now. Go, go, Say it. Go, go, Richard, go, I command you to come go, out of me right now. Go, I command you to come out of my body right this second. I command you to come out of my body right now. I forgive you and I release you. Richard, I forgive you and I release you. Go. All the sadness and fear and sorrow you caused me as a kid. I forgive you right now, and I release you from my soul. Go. Go. Come out. Richard, come out. Richard, come out. Richard, come out. You demon of fear, you come out of Richard right now. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out of there. 
Come out. Come out. Come out. Say anything you match your match tonight. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. What? I have no pain. Come out. You have no pain? It's all gone? Spirit of hate. Go out right now. Spirit of fear. Come out right now. Come out right now. I can go take it to the room and come out right now. Fix it. Hey, do you know how to turn that on? Fire! I ever give her a testimony. Right? Satan, lose your hold. Fight. Now listen to me. You got to be hard on the devil. You cannot go easy on the devil. YouTubers, listen to me. He's not going to go easy on you. He's not going to go easy on you. You got to go hard on him. Real hard. Real hard. I command all my husband's demons come out of me right now. All of his hate and all of his anger. Come out. Get out of my body right this second. All of it. Everything come out of me right now. All of it. All the men, all the bad marriages, all the insanity. Go. Come out now. Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord. But get out of my body and get out now. Go now. Get out of his body right now. Right now. Get out right now. Is it working? Get out right now. I got lights. She's right there. Jesus' name. Jesus. YouTubers, you listen to me. Praying doesn't work with the devil. Okay. <sighs> Demons go to church every Sunday. They love church. They go in there. They help you pray because they know you're not getting any answers. The devil's hard on people. He's brutal. You got to be brutal back. You got to be brutal back to him. Jesus never took it easy on the devil. He said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You do not savor the things of God, you savor the things of men. Jesus was angry at the devil. Jesus never sat around listening to the devil. You cannot sit around listening to negative thoughts in your mind and amount to anything for God. You will be a failure for the rest of your life. Come out right now. Come out right now. Satan told him, turn these stones into bread. He said, he rebuked the devil with God's holy word. Right now. He told the man in the synagogue in Mark, Mark chapter 1, I charge you, come out of that man. I charge you, Satan. Come out of that man. You do not handle the devil lightly. You fight back and you fight with fury. If you don't, he will take advantage of you. He will crush you. He will destroy you. He will leave you with nothing. The devil does not play around with people. Demons do not jack around with people. They will jack you up. They will steal your money and your life like nothing you can believe. They will steal everything from you. He will steal everything. He will kill everything you've got. He will destroy everything you own. He will kill you. He will steal from you. He will destroy you. You must step up and step out on your faith. You must fight back and do what's right. You must repent of your sins. You must apologize to the Lord for what you've done to Him. You must apologize to the Lord for what happened. She's got the mic. Okay. Here, go ahead and interview her and have her give her testimony. <clears throat> give her a testimony. I'm sorry. What happened sorry, tonight? John, People were praying. Come for out my in Jesus' mighty name. And I felt something. Here's the testimony. This lady got healed tonight. I believe that I'm healed, and I know I'm healed because my knees doesn't hurt anymore. The, Praise the Lord. The bones are back in place. Amen. You felt something pop in your knees? Yes. Is he gone? Pop. Huh? Is he gone? And I'm healed. I'm set free. How do I know? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Thank you, sense Jesus. anything? Feel better. You feel better? Yeah. Yeah. Now you need to pray for someone else's knees. Like what are you thinking about? Huh? You ready? What are you thinking about? Like the oppressors left me. Oppressors left you? And Do you have any? Uh, you speak in tongues? Yeah. 
Now let's see if that's changed. Ready? Go. Good. Louder. Louder. If anyone needs any Good. physical healing, we have a lady here who is just healed. She'd like to pray for you. If you need physical healing, please come forward and see me. Stand right here. Louder. Let's repeat after me. Bula Baba, Roshanda, Belo Savi, Zeko Baba, Vashanda Raba. Go. There you go. There it is right there. Let it go. Diabetes. There you go. High sugar level. Okay. Kendra. What's wrong with you? Your name's. What's wrong with you? Art. Diabetes. Okay. Kendra, please. Play for his diabetes to go away in the high sugar level to stabilize to normal. Pray for him. Okay. Go ahead. What? Oh, that guy there. You heal this man from the top of his head to the soles of diabetes. And we command okay. that the diabetes now, leave diabetes in Jesus' is, uh, name. Now, rooted in command negative it to emotions leave. And we in the soul, it in usually from name. childhood. Amen. Be healed in the name of so Jesus. The child took upon himself times all of our infirmities that we may be a healed. Young adult. So we receive and it, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you did. We thank you that when you took the stripes on your back, you did so for our, to take away our infirmities. And we believe, Lord God. We proclaim your word. And you are faithful and true. We when you thank were young, you. did we you thank do you that? and praise you for the healing, Lord God, for Lord Jesus, for taking uh, this sickness older, from us. In Jesus' name, diabetes, go. Like get out of my brother right now. Get out. In uh, Jesus' name, you have no place in him. This is a man of God. He's been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. If there's any spirit causing this diabetes, we command you to cease your activity and get out of my brother right now. In Jesus' name, get out. In Jesus' name, heal. Healing, healing, healing. We want to hear the testimony to the glory of God. They all came out. Jesus, you said if we they ask anything in your name that would glorify you and the Father, that you would do it. So, Lord, I'm asking you right now on behalf of my brother Art to heal his body because you have already paid the price. You have already redeemed us from the curse. You've already taken upon yourself our infirmities. So we call forth your healing. We apprehend your healing in Jesus' name. Be healed. Diabetes, go. You have no place in my brother. My bro blood sugar level, return to normal. Return to normal. I don't want to hear any excuses of the body. We don't accept any excuses. We just demand that his body operate normally. Blessed. Blessed is the man of God. Blessed. Blessings upon my brother in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We look forward to hearing the testimony, Lord God. I repent of carrying Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look forward to the positive blood test results and my brother testifying of the Lord's faithfulness. In Jesus' name. It's not because we're good, Lord. It's because you're good. It's not because of our righteousness, but it's because of your righteousness. We thank you that you love us, Lord God. And you healed all that came to you, that you had compassion and healed. We receive it. We receive your compassion, your healing, not based on any merit of our own, but based on your love and kindness and goodness and grace and mercy. We thank you for it, and we praise you for it now. We praise you for my brother Art's healing, for diabetes being gone and blood sugar levels returning to normal. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Carrying burdens. I repent of it, Lord. I repent of carrying burdens. Come out. Come out right now. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Come out. 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 Come out.